Let me say, I'm, I'm very interested in what I call alternative and off-label treatments. I abbreviate those as AOTs, and I define them as you know, treatments that are advertised uh, somewhere to slow, stop, or reverse ALS without what most scientists would say is, is really you know, hard evidence. And the reason I'm interested in them is because patients are interested in them. So I didn't go into ALS interested in these things. I had no training in, in these types of treatments. But what I noticed you know, a few years into building my multidisciplinary ALS clinic is that most of my patients were coming in with bags of products they purchased on the internet. Uh, you know, and I asked, you know, why are you doing this? And he said, well, I appreciate all the things you can do, but you know, really all these little things are small. They don't stop or reverse the disease. And you know, like the old slogan on the X-Files, patients and families want to believe that there's something more out there. And so they're going to experiment with these things. And I would rather have them experiment with me involved, maybe helping to guide them toward more promising treatments and away from more expensive or potentially harmful things. So I became interested in these things simply because my patients are interested in them. You know, a lot of times I hear uh, my colleagues in ALS refer to AOTs as that stuff's all garbage. And, you know, after spending uh, just about every evening and weekend in the last 11 years reading about some AOT, I disagree with that statement. So surprisingly, out of the 59 treatments that ALS Untangled has previously reviewed, there's at least nine of them that have at least one positive clinical trial. Does that mean these things are absolutely proven to work? No, but certainly there, there are things that require more study. I mean, we don't have the answer in ALS. And so if some odd thing is out there with a positive study, We'd have to, we have to follow up on that. We have to you know, do a, a, a larger, you know, better designed study to really figure out if this is something that might help patients. You know, when we have the conversation about research, I'm a big advocate for people getting involved in clinical trials. And the reason, as I said before, is that these are the way we move the whole field forward. But there are always going to be patients who either can't find a clinical trial they qualify for or can't find one that's designed in a way that's acceptable to them. And those patients, in my experience, are gonna be self-experimenting.